Hello, everyone, and welcome back to PokePaint, the series where I draw new Pokemon to inhabit my fan-made Pokemon region, Gladios, based on the U.S. state of Florida. I hope everyone had a good Halloween and enjoyed my accompanying Halloween ghost-type themed episode of PokePaint. But now, as we all shift from the spooky season to the holiday season, I thought I should draw some more reoccurring Pokemon in the form of my regional dog and the aforementioned Pikachu clone. If you remember, last time I explained that the ghost Fakemon Boodal and its evolutions were heavily related to this region's Pikachu clone, as the ghost that was the Pokemon's true form would inhabit a doll version of our Pikachu clone, a mon that itself would be inspired by Mickey Mouse, and the fact that the Walt Disney World Resort is located smack dab in the middle of Florida. In designing a Pikachu clone, it's important that it's easily recognizable as one, incorporating reoccurring design themes like the chibi body, the electric pouch cheeks, and the vaguely Thunderbolt reminiscent tails, while also making it apparent that it is its own and unique creature. I think the Pikachu clones that do this the best are Pachirisu, Dedene, and Togedemaru. Not to say that any of them are bad, However, I just think that these are the most effective designs, as not only do they have more distinct body plans and color palettes when compared to the others, but they also have their own readily apparent inspirations that shine through their designs, like common squirrels, hamsters, and, um, I actually don't know what Togedemaru is based on, a uh, hedgehog? Hold on a second. Now, oh, uh, looking it up, apparently it's based on a on a Ryukuyu spiny rat. So I guess I was lying a bit when I said that the inspirations were easily seen through des through the design. Uh, but moving on to my Pikachu clone, when designing Mouseketeer, I wanted the Mickey Mouse side of its inspiration to show uh, just as much as the Pikachu side. And referencing uh, the non-electric fairy tale mascot mouse uh, with its iconic round ears, head markings, gloves, and old-fashioned buttoned cartoon pants, I feel like it was I was pretty easily able to make the visual reference without being too obvious. It also helped that I shuffled around the colors uh, from both characters. Speaking of the colors, its shiny was made to be a sepia tone gray brown to reference this character's Steamboat Willie origins and the early days of Walt Disney cartoons. Another way I made its personality shine through is in playing up the underdog hero that Mickey Mouse is usually depicted as. I also reference this in its new ability, Heroic which gives it a higher critical hit ratio against opponents with the ability Villainous. I'll get into exactly what that means in a second. A specific inspiration for this tiny hero personality was how I made it fight with its lightning bolt tail like a sword. This and its name, Mouseketeer, is a direct reference to the early 2000s Disney cartoon spoof on the Three Musketeers, the Three Mouseketeers. I feel like referencing that depiction through in a slight royalty fantasy warrior vibe, which is very important to the feel of the original character. Mouseketeer, the hero mouse Pokemon. They have famously heroic personalities and often find themselves serving as protectors of less powerful Pokemon. Using their electrically charged tail like a sword, they do battle against cruel and villainous Pokemon. Violevolence and Luchabor are their most common enemies. Though they are often outmatched by their sheer size and strength of their enemies, they make up for it with great determination. Now I should probably explain this new ability as it comes with a few changes to previously introduced Pokemon of mine. The ability Heroic is a reference to the underdog hero stereotype, using their noble qualities to defend the innocents against villains. This ability has a counterpart, Villainous, where it would boost moves like knock off, foul play, or false surrender, the more obviously evil moves. I felt the Pokemon fitting to gain this ability were Luchabor, since it already has that big bully thing going for it, uh, and it matches the strong, imposing, and unapologetically cruel feel of a lot of Mickey Mouse's early villains, as well as Vilevolence. As it was pointed out by a few commenters that uh, its original ability made it, made very little sense, as it no longer had a shroud to hide in, 
um, on top of the fact that it already shares a relationship with Musketeer, I felt like changing its ability uh, to make the relationship a little more concrete felt very appropriate. The second Pokemon of the day would be the regional dog of the Gladios region. Another one of the generally early Pokemon that are usually based on dogs that are popular pets from the country slash real life area of origin. Like how Yamper is a corgi because the late Queen of England was famous for owning them, or how Lillipup references how terriers, being small and bred to be cute, make them popular in cities like New York, uh, Unova's real life inspiration. With that in mind, I did some searching to find a popular Floridian dog breed to base these on, but quickly found that the dogs that are popular there are not super unique to the area. Making a Golden Retriever or German Shepherd or Rottweiler Mon just felt a little too easy, as well as possibly boring. But thankfully, I was able to shift my inspiration because of the research that I was doing. The deep south of the USA, the region of the country that Florida is in, is famous for having a massive stray problem. Uh, this gave me an idea that really excited me. Since strays are usually dirty, as they are domesticated animals that aren't fully capable of taking care of themselves, I felt like I should make a dog made of mud, referencing the trait, while at the same time leading into a visual pun referencing a completely unrelated animal in making a literal mud puppy. Making the flowy mud patterns work was tricky at first, Especially because I wanted to A. Communicate that this mon was made out of mud and not simply covered in it, and B. Communicate that this Pokemon would be very messy, leaving mud everywhere. Uh, but I think the way that I did it uh, was effective in the end. I had the idea that the tongue would hang out uh, and be way over exaggerated dribbling off mud like dog slobber uh, But unfortunately, I can't help but occasionally glance at it and feel like it's vomiting mud everywhere, which was not my intention Finally the name Puddle is a portmanteau of puppy and puddle Puddle, the mud puppy Pokemon their bodies are made entirely out of a soft clay-like material Although they were once popular pets in their home region, a stray population has been steadily increasing due to how messy they can be. They continuously track mud all over the place and fling it about when they wag their tails. This is a common occurrence as these playful Pokemon are extremely excitable. It is important that they have ready access to water as they can easily dry out, causing their skin to crack uncomfortably. Now, Papuddle's evolved form, Sedamut, was an even less concrete I was an even less concrete idea that I had than the first design. My original concept was to take a famously slobbery dog, which ended up being in the first few drafts a pit bull, uh, and playing up the slobber as dribbling mud. Although I really liked that idea in theory, I, I felt that the one that I drew was just too different from the first form, and it also felt a little bit uninspired when compared to the first form, which I think is a relatively unique, if not visually interesting, idea. Not to mention it looked too mean to be both the evolution to such a jovial Pokemon and to be the man's best friend dog sleeping next to the farmer on a rocking chair stereotype, as there's a lot of classic American farmers and farms in and around Florida. In my second version, I kept some of the Pitbull, but also combined some of its traits with that of the Hungarian Mop Dog, which as the name and shaggy coat might imply, are not very popular in hot places like Florida. However, looking at the pictures of Mop Dogs lying down and seeing how they look like puddles, this gave me the image of my Mud Dog Pokemon uh, sleeping in a piled up uh, amorphous puddle of their own mud instead of curling up like a regular dog, maybe with its nose and ears sticking out the front or blowing bubbles as it snores loudly. I had a version that was full mop dog, uh, looking like a straight up puddle come to life, but it was just not interesting enough of a shape to go through with. So I combined traits from both animals, keeping the legs shown and the slobbery jowls and underbite of the pit bull, as well as, the, as, well as covering the eyes and giving it a more 
droopy body to reference the mop dog. At first I was hesitant to cover the eyes, as I already gave a mon with that exact trait in Luchabor earlier in the Pokedex, and we're still very early, uh, a little too early to be repeating traits like this. However, I wanted to redo Luchabor's design anyways, and I really like this characteristic on Sedamut. The name Sedamut is a combination of the words sediment, which is mud that collects at the bottom of bodies of water, mud, and mutt. Sedamut, the mud dog Pokemon, and the evolved form of Papuddle. They leave puddles of mud and dirt wherever they go. Their wet noses give them the best sense of smell in the Pokemon world. Using it, they can track down a scent from multiple regions away. The most famous case of this was a set of mutt that was able to track their owner from the southern tip of the Gladius region all the way to Castelia City in Unova, a journey of over 1,500 miles. Stereotypical depictions of farm life in Gladius include visuals of set of mutt sleeping in a pile of their own mud on a farmhouse porch, as they are most popular with farmers and working class due to their loyalty and physical strength. So here are a few more of those classic reoccurring Pokemon in Mouseketeer, Papuddle, and Sedamut. Personally, I'm really happy with all of them, but you'll all have to tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm working on the next few videos all at once here. One is an episode of History of the Future, uh, leading uh, from the last one where we will take a more broad look at the Tau Ceti system, as well as two more Paint episodes for November. Uh, one where I do some regional forms for Gladios, and another where I will be making some counterpart Pokemon for the duology prompt for the Ultra Collab video, which will be coming up next time. As always, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then leave a like. And if you want to see more like it, then subscribe, and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.